Monday evening, and I hope you've had a great day starting a new week. And I hope that tonight, as we are gathered together, you are looking forward to the rest of the week. Or maybe you're a little tired and I just haven't hit on the truth yet. So that's what I kind of want us to talk about tonight, truth. I'd like for you to um, read with me, if you have your Bibles in front of you, from John, the good news according to St. John. This is from the 16th chapter. It's only one verse, so listen for the word of God. However, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you in all truth. He won't speak on his own, but will say whatever he hears and will proclaim to you what is to come. I want to read that one more time. However, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you in all truth. He won't speak on his own, but will say whatever he hears and will proclaim to you what is to come. This is a good word for us. It is the word according to um, the Christ who has given uh, the disciples their spirit, the spirit, the Holy Spirit, and which we've talked about before, which is the spirit of truth, which in fact is himself. So he has given them Jesus now, and this is continuing on from John that we've talked about before. Um, this is a great passage. This is a passage that is difficult for a lot of us, and I will just share with you that it's difficult for me. Truth is very important to me. Um, I grew up in a family. Uh, my, both of my parents were um, of the lineage that uh, if you told a lie, basically you were alienated. You were out. There wasn't anything that would get you. It's not just in trouble. Uh, it's far more than that. It's far deeper. You would lose their trust. And once you lost their trust, that would not be good. Um, neither one of them, and I've heard them both say, my parents, I've heard them both say over and over again, I can't stand a liar. Um, and we do know that in this world in which we live, there are many people who do lie, who can't seem to tell the truth. It, you know, you say, what, what is the deal here? I mean, why does it cost you less to tell the truth than it does to tell a lie? I mean, wh what is the situation here? I, I don't really understand. Why would you stand there and lie to me? And yet we know that many people lie. Now, for what reason is convoluted? You know, it causes us a lot of cognitive dissonance. Maybe they've had a situation growing up where their parents lied to them, and that happens a lot. Maybe they've had friends who have lied to them. There's no telling what situation they've been in, and maybe that's how they learned to lie. I don't think we're born learning and knowing how to lie. But when we taste or when we have grown up with those who tell the truth, and when we are around good friends, and that's probably, uh, if you're a person who doesn't like lies, then you probably have tried to surround yourself, at least those that you're closest to, with people who also tell the truth. Sometimes it may hurt, but they always tell the truth. And that's the way we want to be. I mean, that's how we want life to be. And yet, for some reason, you know, we can't cut off the rest of the world and just say, well, I want everybody who tells the truth over on this side, and if you are a liar, over on this side, and you just go on home, and the rest of you can be in my life. Somehow, the world doesn't work that way. John is also the one who tells us that um, Christ died for us, that Christ died for everyone. One, and we know the passage from John 3, 16, that he did die, in fact, for the whole world. Um, not one more than another. We are all equal in the fact that God, Christ, died for us. So I want you to think about this particular situation then when, he, when John tells us about Jesus and about being the spirit of truth. As I said, back in John 14, we talked about that one night in a devotional about coming to them, and he is the way and the truth and the life. But what he gives them on the day, what he tells those disciples before he leaves, is that I am the spirit of truth. 
As I've gotten older, I have uh, learned, and I know many of you have also, that uh, I've learned better how to listen to people with a fairly straight face that I know are lying to me. Um, I didn't used to be very good at that at all, and I'm not saying that that's a good thing to learn. I'm just saying sometimes you need to hear people out, and you need to hear what direction they're going, even though you know that it's a lie. But we yearn for the truth. And when we have made mistakes, there's just something about us because that's who God is, the truth. We yearn for that. And so when we have opportunities, maybe we've made mistakes in trusting people who don't tell the truth. And now we are at a certain point in our own lives where we think, I can't really trust anybody and I don't really know that anyone will ever, I'll be able to trust anyone ever again. So I'll just go on with my life. That's a very difficult place to be. I've been in that place before. I've been in that place recently where I think, who is really trustworthy? And if I make decisions, they're going to be big decisions right now. And I'm by myself, except with God, making those kinds of decisions. So I want someone who can help me to know what is the truth, to be able to discern when people are telling me the truth. And so I need that spirit of truth, right? And you need that spirit of truth. That has troubled me a great deal. And if you are in those situations with people that you work with and other people, maybe even in your own family, and you can't come to grips with what to do, I'm going to suggest tonight what I always suggest because it's always the best idea I know, and that is going to the spirit of truth, the Christ. And Christ is the one who will help you, who will guide you. That spirit of truth will guide you through to the truth. There'll never be anyone like Christ. You're not going to find somebody else like Christ on the earth. But you can rest in the knowledge that if you let God guide you, that if you let the spirit of truth guide you in your life, that you will find yourself in the place that you are supposed to be, that you will be able to make decisions Somehow, I don't know how God works this, but I've had it happen over and over so I can bear witness to it, where the right thing happens. The truth comes out, and there is God in that truth. And there you are, safe, safe. It's an amazing process. We have been in this virus so long, and there have been so many promises made and so many promises taken away, so many things that were supposed to be one way and yet they've turned out another way. And that's been one more thing to add to our list of not trusting people and of being afraid and of who the liars are and what's going to happen to us in the end. My answer for you tonight is, again, as I always tell you, my answer is God. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, will get you through this will lead you as you continue to walk in the light, will continue to lead you forward, and will continue to watch your steps and watch your decisions as you stay in communication that we call prayer, as you stay in the scripture. The scripture is so important. If you are concerned about the truth, read the scripture. Worship. Talk about God with other people. But you will find the truth. God is not hiding it. God's not hiding and God is not hiding the truth. It's right there for you. I want to encourage you to remember that tonight. Maybe that's something you're going to need through this week. I don't know. I feel like somebody is going to need this. And I hope that it's helpful. This passage helps me so much, this passage in John. Because truly, God will help me make these right decisions in these difficult times. And they will be decisions made into truth, made truthful, 
by the Spirit of Truth, who lives in us as we help other people. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.